<sighs> All right, so we're live. So before we start, we were talking off camera, off podcast for a little bit. Um, before we actually start, like I was telling you, just bear with me and give me a couple of minutes to set this up. I have to give a disclaimer on top of a disclaimer, and then I want to talk about how we ended up here. So first of all, and it seems so weird that I have to say this because I don't know, I was brought up a certain way and it was just ingrained in me that, you know, we treat women greatly. You know, we hold doors open for them. We respect them. Obviously everybody comes from a mom. Like it's, it's important to love women and treat them with respect in no way is today going to be about condoning any type of abuse, whether it's towards men or women, honestly, whether it's towards, we were talking before, like whether it's towards a freaking moth, like I'm not, I'm not for it. So I just want to say that this is this is not an excuse making show. Um, this is not to condone any sort of behavior from anybody. Um, I think what this is really about is promoting growth and change. So I just wanted to get that out there because we're going to talk about some heavy stuff. And I just wanted everybody to know where we all stand, because I think we were talking before. We're all in agreement about that. Like abuse is not OK, no matter what. OK, so that's out there. <laughs> Now I want to talk about why we got here. And this is a quick story. Um, I've known Joe for Joe the Dragon. I just knew him as Joe Vitale, the Sicilian kid. We, I've known Joe for 20 years. And actually, I was just thinking about this when I just used the, the restroom really quick because I've with you. Yeah, I was thinking about you in the bathroom. With you specifically, I don't know why this just popped in my head, but I've been on the both sides of loving you and hating you. Yeah, we have. But I, don't so, was real, I don't think it was really any hate. No, this I mean, is what this love was always present. This is what I want to say. So there was this quick stories. Me and Joe played football together. We ran this trick play. It was a touchdown play. Oh, my first touchdown ever. It was your first touchdown ever. <laughs> you didn't know that? No, I didn't know that. You so be me. we did this. We learned this we play like from this. another football team. I think it was from Poughkeepsie, which I which is ironic, ironic. right? Um, so they did a strict play on us and just made us look stupid. So basically I was the quarterback, Joe was a running back and we had this other running back, uh, his name was Sean. So this trick play, I go out as wide receiver, Sean lines up as quarterback, Joe lines up as running back, Sean throws me the ball. I pretend like I'm going to run, everybody swarms me and then I flip it back to Joe and he just scored. It was like a 50 yard. It's called a hook and ladder. Hook and ladder. Thank it's you. Called a, I'll never forget <laughs> it. I, and I watched the video and I got to tell you something, you took a you took a couple good shots. <laughs> they, they hammered you. They unloaded on me. So you, you again, so you that was like, yourself for yes. That so I love Joe for that. There was also a time in high school where I don't know why. I, this is so I don't know if you remember this, but I, I heard rumors, which is also part of why we're here today, because rumors spread like wildfire that Joe was like calling me fat in high school. Wait, no, you, I don't know if you remember this. I don't even know. I never called you fat. First of all, I think I was fat. Sure, so you you might have been, but no, you're never fat. You're only a, let's go. Let's go at husky. I was eating too many spaghetti sandwiches. Hold on, I, I, hold on. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I, I, I could be a douchebag, but it wasn't. I would never called you fat. But it, that that's not even the point. Maybe. But like, I was like so mad, and I went. I knew where Joe was getting out of class. It was like his science class, and I'm, I don't even know if you knew this happened, dude. I was ready to. You were gonna walk out of the class, and I was gonna punch you in the mouth. You don't remember? I showed up to your classroom. And I was calling you out. You don't remember? In one of your classes, you were on your desk. I said, come on, come on, through the door. So I, I go know, up to Mr. this Cole, class. Which is like, that's it. Right? As the bell rings, and I get an arm on my shoulder, and it was the principal. And he goes, Cabelli, come here. So he, he like, I won't say who it was, but um, he just, like, lowered the situation. And I think Joe and I had a talk after that, and it was all, like, BS. And it was back to love. So that was I'm, really the only incident. That was it. And I don't and I don't think I ever called you fat. Just off the record 20 years Thank later. You. Whatever it. you heard. Thank you. <laughs> so I know so you know, we're so I'm just saying that because you put out a thing, you had an MMA championship fight, and I was like, I want to go and support him. And that's where really you guys come in because I thought I was just going there for a fight. And then I see on the other side, um, people were wearing uh, certain shirts talking about which is ironic. And uh, it, another disclaimer real quick, we're not here to trash anybody. Um, people have their own opinions. I, I don't know if they're right or wrong. I'm kind of here to explore all of this and not to get truth out, but just, you know, I want peace in some of this. Maybe that's the point. Like maybe this is really like today is, is the beginning or the continuation of healing. Um, but spoiler alert, you won the fight. 
and I guess some controversy happened afterwards, and you felt like you needed to make a post. So I'm almost done with my long intro rant, and then you guys can start talking. We're still in the intro? Yeah, this is still the <laughs> intro. <laughs> um, so you made this post, and this was the catalyst for me to reach out to you and ask you to, to come on this. And I'm just going to read some of it. Um, I, I just thought this was really powerful, and I might get choked up a little bit, honestly. Uh, I'm a sensitive guy. I, I cry. So am I. Okay, it's worked out for me. Um, in the past. Okay. So just some of the stuff you said, Joe, a little over a year ago, I was involved in a relationship that was very abusive, physically, mentally, emotionally, you name it. It was toxic and unhealthy. I eventually realized this and decided it was best if I got out, but not before it was too late. I had made some mistakes in some instances and became physical with my partner. I don't know why I was this way, but all I know is at the time I lacked the proper coping mechanisms. I needed to deal with the toxicity of this relationship. I had decided to advocate for domestic violence myself, which is honestly what I'm, I want to promote more. You know, I'm, I'm here for the growth of like, you know, we're going to talk about what it means to be an advocate of domestic violence. Now you, you asked yourself, how am I going to do that? These people looked at me as a monster. There's no way I can speak to them and, and apologize to each one individually. I know I am no longer against you, but rather I stand with you in the struggle, in the attempt to raise awareness about domestic violence. And then this is the last thing you said. This isn't for anyone's forgiveness towards me or my actions. I've been called every name you can imagine. I've been in, I've been belittled to no end. I feel for many survivors that have escaped dangerous relationships. I'm sure it couldn't have been an easy task. The man I know I could be and should have been this whole time. Uh, I'm becoming a better man. The man I, I could have, I could be and should have been the whole time. I will continue to work hard at fixing my broken pieces. I have already begun. I am no longer ashamed of my past. Instead, I am proud of the man that has made me today. This is my public apology. And so I read that and I was like, I need to talk to Joe. Um, and so we're not, we're going to talk about the actual fight and MMA and all that probably at the end. Um, but that got me, man. I've known you, like I said, I've known you for a long time and I saw you put yourself out there and I know how hard that is, especially in your situation. Why uh, we could start out like this. Cause we can tell Christine's here. So real quick, obviously I talked about Joe, um, Christine McFadden is we, we, we didn't reveal necessarily who, you know, I put on the promotion special guest. I don't know why Joe just told me to hide okay. the uh, identity. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you want to talk about that real quick first, just with Christine. Well, you know, I just, uh, she's got a special story also. And, uh, I, I just wanted to kind of make it just, you know, I don't want it to get personal. Just, just I wanted to bring her in, just, to, just to, you know, discuss. We've we've had a talk, you know, a bunch of talks within the last week, and I think that we're on the uh, the same page as far as the direction that we want to go with everything. Mm -hmm. um, and it, you know, it's an imperative part that she comes in and speaks, you know, uh, to everyone about about it also. So yeah, I mean, I was excited when Joe said he wanted because I didn't know where this was going to go. Because honestly, I'm nervous about doing today. You know, I was talking to my my girlfriend about this and I'm like, I'm terrified because I'm not I don't necessarily feel equipped for you this. You asked for it. You I asked, asked I asked I do a lot of things. So one of my favorite authors is Ralph Waldo Emerson. He said, always do the things you're afraid to do. This is one of the scariest things. Like I told you guys I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro two years ago. That's scary as hell. This is ten times scarier well, than I that. I agree. Getting in a cage isn't 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 all uh, it's cracked up to be either, but Dude, you know, I being mean, here is tough. You this never is know some what kind of feedback you're going to get, man. It's just, you know. And I, that's why I put the disclaimer out because I know there's going to be people that no matter what, they're going to make this look bad or make try to make us look bad because somebody's going to accuse me of giving you a platform. And I'm not here to give you a platform to talk about, you know, listen, this is why I did it and th this is the excuse. I'm giving you a platform to encourage this advocacy and this growth and change. Well, part of that growth is see maybe – Let's say, let's say a year. I'm so happy you're ago. here right now. I know it's great. <laughs> Yo, know, let's say two years ago, my platform could have just as easily been uh, social media, mm -hmm. and all the negative comments that have been said towards me, I could have just kept going back and forth, back and forth. You know what? I feel so relieved that I don't have to do that. You know, my main thing with everything, and it's really helped me along with the process of growing, is uh, I keep it in the back of my head. You always beat a negative and you know you beat negativity with positivity and uh that's that's the main thing i i see all these negative things i leave it alone yeah i leave it alone and if somebody's negative towards me and i want to react it's going to be in a positive manner and that's part of the thing that helps me mentally grow because your behavior the more you 
you continue a certain behavior, the more it comes natural to you. And uh, that's the way it's been for seven months. You know, I've been the one getting, you know, harassed on. And, you know, media. like, so um, not that, you know, I love you to death. Yeah. Um, I'm, I got, I have to play a little like devil's advocate. Um, no, there's going to be a lot of people that said you abused, you know what I mean? Like I didn't use the word abused. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said harassed. Uh, harassed. Okay. I'm sorry. But I actually, no words. I want to be precise no, no, with words. That's important. Changed, Thank you. I was going to say abused. I, I was going to, and that's probably why you just thought about it. But I said harassed because I don't want to, I want, I don't want those people present that were going to say you were abused. And I have a whole backstory about that. I mean, you can, we can get into it if you, if you want to take it that route, but you, you know, let's, let's keep it to where we are right yeah, now. Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so Christine, you were at the fight. I did go to the fight. I went to the fight because I am an advocate for domestic violence awareness. So I went to raise awareness for domestic violence. That's who I am. That's what I've been for the past 16 years since my assault. Um, so I went there just to show support and I got very um, emotionally involved in the fight because it was um, dear to what I stand for. So I took offense to um, the purple because the way it was portrayed to me was that the purple was actually a mockery. And I was, I was, I was hurt. I was upset. I was mad. And I got very involved in the fight. And then the day after the fight, I started to see a lot of things that didn't rub me the right way. It's not who I am. It's not what I represent. It's not the path that I've led all these years. And it made me question what I do. I, I put my story out there to uplift people, to help people, to promote change. And the more I saw the more I question what more could I personally do? Mm -hmm. Because I know what I've done for 16 years. I've reached so many people around the world. And the before, more- Before, Christine, before you go further with this, because I know you have a lot to say on that. There's like, Joe knows your story. I've read your story. Can you just, I, you know, I don't know how much you want to talk about it. I'm sure you're, you've talked about it a lot. Why is this so important for you specifically? 16 years ago, um, I was attacked with sulfuric acid by my stepfather because my mother left an abusive relationship. I was um, used as a means to make sure that my family never forgot the man that attacked me. So I spent five weeks in the hospital trying to recover, cut, touch and go if I would even live or what would happen to me or what would I become. I struggled dearly with... Um, not judging people with um, always being cautious about what I do. Um, this was a huge step for me to step out of my comfort zone. But the way I looked at the choices I made was there was more to the story than what met the eye. And I wanted to not only help people who've been abused, but I also want to help people who abuse people. I don't want to see them repeat the things that they've done negatively negatively in their life. Especially when they're open to change. When right? they are, people have a choice in life. It's one, do you want to change your negative actions and become a better person? Or two, are you just continue going to continue to be that person who constantly has to hurt someone else? I never once in a million years would condone violence of any sort towards any person. Joe personally knows because I've had this discussion with him for the past week, many of times, I don't condone his past. I will never condone his past. Um, but I see change in him. His public apology made me personally reach out to him, which people are say, how the world could you do that after everything you've been through? Like this right. guy could hurt you. Like, have you not seen him? And I did see him. I was terrified to be in that gym that night just with all those people because they're bigger than me it's a small venue god only knows what they could have done to me i mean if if somebody got offended and a fight broke out i'm a very small person so i was petrified because the line that i walked doing this is very thin to advocate and be a victim of domestic violence but then also stand beside somebody who's been accused of assault <clears throat> is a big step for me yeah. And I trusted in my heart and in my gut that the choice is to reach out to Joe and be like, Joe, can you explain to me this toxic relationship? Because I want 
I want to understand what a person does who has assaulted somebody. Like, how do they feel? How do they change? How do they tap into those um, triggers, in a sense, that made them act in ways that they acted? I wanted a full understanding of what my mother went through, what I saw daily growing up as a child, what I lived. And for him to be open to talk to me and be honest with me and speak to me, I can't say I wasn't scared because I was scared shitless. Wait, probably she wanted as, me in a public place the first time. You know? I mean, I mean, probably I get it. You know, as nervous as he was because he probably had doubt as to why like, I was asking to like, speak Like, am I being him. set up? <laughs> yeah, well, that, well no, I, I tell her I have trust issues with it too, you know? completely what went through my mind. I'm like, oh my God, if I do this, is this guy going to like hurt me because I showed up at the fight, you know, with one one goal, which was just to promote, you know, awareness. Like, oh my God, what if this guy does something to me? And actually, I think the second day I talked to him, I was like, okay, I want to meet you personally, but <laughs> there's a few rules. One, <laughs> no matter what we say, we could never get mad at each other. Never. Like you can't get offended with my views. I won't get offended with your views. Two, my safety is utmost importance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I've been near death. I don't want anything to happen to me. I have children. You have children. Like a child. I was like, so, you know, we can never be well, against each other on what we feel or what we say. We just have to work towards a bigger goal, which is going to be how do you recover and how do people recover that have been through this? What what can we bring to the table to show people like the things that they have to learn and do and overcome to be what he's you, looking to be? You know what? The, the thing that you touched base upon, or, 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 one of you said it, but just like in drug addicts, you always hear it. You're not capable of change unless you want to change yourself. And, and that's a big deal. You know, you got to find something that is in your life worth changing for, you know, and for whatever reason, 36 years, I haven't found it. I was always, you know, aggressive by nature, but there's certain things you can do and certain things you can't. And you have to find that one thing that makes you want to change, turn your life around, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, I don't want to be where I'm at now. You know, I want to, I always expect it to be bigger than I am, but the, this aura around me has been brought me, you know, brought me to where we are right now, you, you know, but mm -hmm. not in a positive manner. My girlfriend currently, I appreciate her and I, I want to change for her because I've been in a toxic relationship. And now I ha because I was in that unhealthy relationship for a year, it makes me appreciate what I have now. And I don't want to lose that because mm -hmm. I know if I do what I did, I'm going to lose it. You know, my son is getting older. A rep his reputation is at stake, you know, and I, and I have to think about him also. Stop being selfish. And it just it's amazing what the like, kids in your life will do. I don't have any kids. My girlfriend has kids. They say it, kids. It, it changes your everything. Ah, it, it does. I mean, it, that's always in the back of my mind, you know? But I think so, like, it's, you know, this is what I talk to people about all the time, um, doing different things that I do and just in conversation where, and we were talking about this before we started, where a lot of the times, and, and this is a cliche thing, usually I won't use cliches, but I think it's so important for people to take their mess and turn it into their message. And people don't realize that though. And I, they're, you know, well, they're, you they're, hide behind it. They're afraid to. And one of the things we talked about was mm. this path that right now, I think a lot of things in our culture don't allow us to have a path towards redemption and mm -hmm. forgiveness. And I think, you know, I'm not talking about <clears throat> maybe in our small circle, but culturally and in society, there's a lot of, you know, people mess up, which we all do. We're human. We're flawed. And I'm not saying, you know, you you abuse a woman because you're flawed. That's that's some, that's on another or level a person in or, general, or just a person. It's... But you make mistakes in life. And I think if we don't allow people to, again, people that are open to change, if we don't allow them that path, we we will make them worse in there with whatever whatever well, issue they have exactly. so I'm, I'm glad that you're stepping above some of this honestly you know, because this is scary dude like i'm i'm not kidding when i say i'm nervous about this this is like this is a scary topic it, it, it is scary it's so personal and a lot of you know a lot of people being me you think you know I, i'm i'm abusive and, and i'm not scared of anything i just go around proud you know like a monster prancing around on everybody and you know but it's scary to be in my shoes too man and part of the reason, you know, part of overcoming that is being true to yourself and being real. That's the first step. You get that out there and you feel good. Now you can recover. And that's where I'm at now. That's where I've been at. Um, like you said, you know, 
I've, uh, there's no, you know, it's easy for everybody to take my actions and call me a monster and say he did this. I wouldn't talk to that guy. I wouldn't associate him. He's a piece of shit. It's so fucking easy for people to point those fingers. But what's going on inside my head? Mm -hmm. Anybody ever stop to think? You can go see. I've been to anger management. I wanted to fucking strangle that guy when I walked out of the office. Doesn't work. Been to therapy. Doesn't work. You know, something's not going to work. Meds, they can have you walking around like a zombie. You know, they may not work for people. You got to find that one thing, like I said. I, I've been incarcerated. I beat the shit out of cinder block walls till my, my knuckles were bloody. What did that do for me? Nothing. You got to want to change. You know, those. there's no type of uh, reform program for an abuser. Mm -hmm. If the abuser isn't reformed or, or, or changed, what is he going to do? He's going to keep abusing. He's going to keep infecting people. You have to, there's got to be something that, that, that some way to get through to people, you know, you know, to. So what did you, what did you, cause I, you know, I, when I was telling a couple of people that I was going to have you on and especially in talking to women, some of the, the things they asked were like, you know, has he really, cause it's seven, is it seven months that would you say, or like a year where you've, how long you've been working on this part of your life? It's the day I, the day that I decided to get out of my health, my unhealthy relationship. So it's a couple of years ago. I mean, you've been going. No, no, no this is this is a. Uh, I'd say it's probably about seven months ago. Okay. Um, I've been the, the relationship I was in was a year, so it's about two two. Years. No, I'm just asking because some people want to know, like, what have you done to, like, you know, from, like, let's say, if my, there's my, any health. Change your mindset, man. But like, did you seek out therapy? I, I, I did. I see, I'm gonna be honest with you. I seeked out. Uh, I spoke to therapists. Spoke to uh, psychiatrists. Um, the th Therapy and I guess what what's helping? Uh, nah, that's that's also you, I don't I don't really feel like therapy is yeah. helping me. You know, speaking to a therapist might help some people, and, and and I promote that if it's working. But I can tell you, it's not. It's it's my want to to change. It's my my own mental. I'm so mentally fucking strong, man. Where I can I can overcome anything by myself. I just gotta want to do it. You gotta say, put your foot down. And say, I had enough of this kind of lifestyle, mm -hmm. and that's the way I've been. When you alter your mind and your mental state things start changing around you. Oh, that's everything. Uh, that's what people don't, you realize. don't realize it until you actually fucking do it. Right. Doors. See, the doors are always there, but you just notice them start to opening when you look at things with this different mindset. It's crazy. And I wish people would, I wish more people, it's not going to click until the, you know, until it does. But I wish more people would understand that there's always been opportunities. You were telling me, Christine, that you saw like, I guess just efforts with Joe. Like, so you're saying even in knowing him, just even in the short time that I've gotten a chance to talk to Joe and get to know Joe, I've seen how certain things might provoke him to get um, angry, upset, um, want to just be negative towards people. And I've seen him not respond mm. to the negativity because there's no point in feeding negative with more negative because then we're just going to live in a world full of violence and hatred. So if you're not feeding that negativity, eventually it'll stop. Eventually it will hopefully move on and choose another course of action in its life. But if you don't respond to it, which is what he hasn't been doing, it helps you grow. I mean, I told him, I think the other day when something happened, I said, hit the gym, hit the gym, relieve some of that anger. Cause I'm pretty dang sure you're probably frustrated. Cause I know I am. Um, and just relieve some tension, but I've seen little by little, Either he'll say something and then he will take it back like, wait a minute, that was just feeding a negative with a negative, or he won't respond at all. And well, I'll, work in progress, I'll message you know? him and I'll be like, yeah, you did it. Like, <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Like you, you either one did not respond or two, you thought about it before I could even be like, Joe, that's just going to feed it. And he's like, no, I know. Right. I thought of that. Oh man. But he, he's growing. And I mean, I've only known him a week and I, he was growing before I knew him. And I've seen just the little bits here and there over the past week of speaking to him. So I'm proud of him. Like, I believe well, that if somebody wants to change, they can change. They just need the resources and the outlets to be able to change. And maybe that's where, you know, domestic violence isn't helping people yet because they're not trying to help the abuser also. But I just want to highlight that again. We I think it's so important in our in our world, and it might be like in little in little things like this, like doing a, a little podcast. I mean, I don't, I don't have a following yet. I, this is not going to make national news, but I think like little things like this, where 
I, I just wanted to highlight that you said like that people can change. People can change. And, and if I can see that with everything I've gone through, like that's a big thing. It's a big step yeah. for me because I should hold the most fear in anybody that has ever assaulted somebody. Mm -hmm. And I'm not fearful of Joe. I'm not. There's no hope in the world if we don't think people can change because then it's just like, uh, what's the word? Then it's like, you just, you're going to be apocalyptic. I was thinking. just going to say that. Like, it's like, what are, what are we doing then? Like, what's the <laughs> point if we don't think people can change? And it's, so. it's so easy. And I, and I'm, you know, I've been, you know, it's happened to me for the past seven months. It's so easy to say your negative shit about me. What are you, what are those people really doing? If you're so dead set on, you know, advocating for domestic abuse, by fucking by by belittling me, what are you doing to help the situation? You're not doing anything. You're you're making it worse. Now I'm changing, but what if I wasn't? I have the mindset where I could change right now. You would just be backing me up into a corner where I'm taking shit and I'm going to explode, and you're just added to the problem. You just added to the you know who, who knows where my next. You but know, since the fight, you have done something absolutely positive. What's that? Joe took his shirts oh, yeah. that he wore for the I walkout. I actually have that now. Um, and he's I want one. Now, um, I'm going to buy changed one. them. And I know I shouldn't be bringing I'm never going to wear it in public. I'm sorry. Oh, you know that, <laughs> that he did. <laughs> you know what? But it's, Thank you for it's bringing awesome. That up. I, I personally am probably going to get one myself because I have my own. Um, as I, everybody knows, mine is Make the World Purple shirts. We do. My own logos, my own labels, because you can't buy things for domestic violence awareness in any local store. Mm. So every year that I've done my walk, we do it. And when I saw Joe take what was used as a negative to him um, and that, make it into such a right. positive that, by a, adding the purple domestic violence ribbon to it and actually going to be selling them and giving it to the local shelter where he lives, mm. that's a huge step and that's amazing and it will help people. That, that, that's where my that's where my mindset has been turning the negatives into a positive just a little backstory because we didn't get into it no i'm sorry i yeah, had no, to say it but the people listening probably may not know about it um i knew that i was going to be involved in a public hanging when i went to that fight by mm -hmm. activists and, and by advocators and you know i didn't know how to how i was playing it's hard enough getting ready for a fight well i will say there was like a little i don't want to say a scuffle but i guess at the weigh-in there was some words exchanged right as soon as i walked in what, so um, what uh, do I want? We want to talk about now. <laughs> but <laughs> it has something alone. to do with the attire. So I mean, we sure. can, so I, I came, I came trying to diffuse the situation. As I said, I knew I was walking into. You know, I didn't know what. And I'm it's such an into. interesting thing because you're going there to fight, and then you're, you know what I'm saying? Like well, overcoming a, a double adversity. Then you know. I mean, yeah, because you're in. Um, what I'm saying is you're in this mentality. Like um, you're already in fight mode. Th that's what I'm saying. Like as an MMA and fighter, you have be, to be like, geared provoked up. more before the fight probably just rears you up, which I think I actually saw, and I'm not trying to be mean, Joe, but I could see like he was already in that frame of mind where it was, and I mean, that's the way every MMA fighter should be. You should be focused. You should be. The switch was on. Ready. His, his beast, beast I mode could see it was when I, full Yeah, effect. I saw it when I walked in and his he's face about to and fight. I was like, oh my God, yeah. what did I just get myself into? Yeah, you can, you know, I, I've done it enough where I can mentally prepare for that. I didn't know how to mentally prepare for what I was walking into outside. No, of the because fighting. you were, you I had went no in, idea. Well, you there's, know, what, there's no reference the for it. You've never fight, been in a situation, but it like was that thrown before. into a whole nother swing of things. Like he was walking into, okay, this is just another fight I'm going to fight. And then Not bam, pow in his face, you know, weeks or whatever before, it was like, no, we've sought you out. Now we're going to try to publicly humiliate you for your past but but you know i'm not i, I had to figure out how i was going to overcome that for me mentally mm -hmm. and getting back to the shirts this is what i decided to do i wanted to when you wear a certain color you're usually showing support for that group and i figured if i could show that i you know i support a, a, a the specific group that maybe i it's a sense waving the white flag and mm -hmm. say, I'm with you. I acknowledge my mistakes. I'm here. Maybe they wouldn't throw so many tomatoes, you know, so to speak. So uh, that was my, for whatever reason, me wearing it was a bad thing. It was turned into this huge petition where I was uh, mocking domestic uh, abuse. And, and that wasn't the way it was supposed to be. It was, it was kind of misinterpreted, uh, you know? Uh, so, and that's another reason I wanted you to on because I, you know, not that I just want to hear your side of the story, but I think everybody deserves to to have an explanation. Like honestly, I and I have to say this: if those people that uh, if they're listening to this, 
if they feel like they need to share their side, I'll have them on. Like, yeah, this is well, not just to say, like, you know, it probably won't happen. Yeah. But I'm just I'd saying, like, like also. you know, I mean, that's uh, we're, we're not here to take sides. We're not. Uh, we were talk, we, we made sure, like, we're not here to blame anybody, but we're just we're just talking about the story. Yeah. Because it did sound like there was a lot of controversy. Involved. There's a ton of controversy, you know, but, you, you know, we. I'm here to to help, you know, to answer any questions. People have questions. People see bits and pieces like you do. Nobody mm -hmm. knows 100% the whole backstory with everything. So, uh, get, sorry, I keep on yeah, interrupting yeah, the story. <laughs> so, what's up with the shirt, right, get, Getting back to that, uh, you know, my my the gym that I train at, UFC gym, APAC, was under a lot of heat due to this petition that was really, like, yeah, because you, why? I'm going to tell you. Because they I, I, their logos that, on it. I um, made these shirts. I printed these with my own money, and these people had no idea. I don't. When you join a gym, man, it's to relieve stress. It's not to get into your personal life. You're not obligated to disclose any criminal background history. They knew nothing, right? But that I was an MMA fighter, and I have a fight, and I'm looking to train. Okay, I bought these shirts. If somebody wants to use my services, they, they give me a check. That's that's the end well, of the that's discussion. The case. Right. But they were, <laughs> they're innocence in all this. Yeah, they, that's they what I'm knew saying. Nothing, yeah. partially because at the time I was embarrassed to talk to talk about it. All right, but I, I had to disclose everything afterwards when when it was brought the heat was brought down on the gym that they're like you said condoning my uh, past. my past and my actions. Not true. Mm -hmm. These guys knew nothing. I bought shirts so they didn't get fuck so so they didn't get heat for it. Mm -hmm. And I gave them the same purple shirts I was wearing. Had nothing. They had no idea until afterwards that we were supposedly mocking them. Anyway, I turned that negative into a positive. By taking the, sh the same the same shirts and just twisting it up. Now, I, you know, people like the shirts. People that don't know, I had no idea what the hell color. was going on. I love purple. They said, where can I get those shirts? You know, and now it just I made I feel like I don't look good in purple, because, but that's a nice purple. Um, it is a cool purple. It's a cool <laughs> shirt. I, I put, just so there's no discrepancy, I put a, a ribbon on the on the sleeves, uh, you know, to so show describe that, that. So just in case people are listening, like just describe the shirt. The shirt has my logo on the back that says dragon on the front. The gym that sponsored me, UFC gym, the color purple uh, in a dry fit material uh, for domestic abuse awareness. And the ribbon is on the right sleeve um, for support and turning that po negative into a positive. I said, well, thank you. It, you know, you brought some publicity to this, but let's make that positive. Every shirt that I sell, which I already have a ton of orders, I'm going to get these printed up. Uh, they're thirty dollars, and uh, every shirt that I sell, the proceeds are going to go to uh, the Women's Resource Center. That's in Maypac, local, local, cool. you know, community stuff. Um, and, and like I said, that's just one way of of helping me heal and grow. And uh, I don't know the naysayers. Uh, everybody that said I was mocking didn't say anything about that. They they're quiet now. Well, no, I think, you know, you just got to keep on doing what you want to do. I don't really Fighting care what good. they say. I'm going to keep and, doing and, this for myself. Well, that's my point. I think, you know, as when you go through, because, you know, I, I don't know if I messaged this to you, Joe, but and if I thought about it and I didn't tell you, is I think some people, and I don't think you're thinking this way, but some people might come on, you know, a podcast like this and, and think that they're going to share their story and then there's going to be like a kumbaya moment oh, and no. it's going to be nothing but like hugs and no. kisses. Oh, and, no. and I think that you already know it's like, no matter Joe, no matter what you do at this point, moving forward, like you're, you're climbing a constant uphill battle. Oh, it's been. And, and I think you know that it's already. And I, I don't, that's fine. You know, I, I, so I think you just, just stay in, in your lane. I mean, that's like my advice, okay. my unsolicited advice to you. <laughs> I hate giving unsolicited advice. Um, the thing that I keep on thinking, and I don't know if Christine and both of you could talk about this, but, um, I, you know, I know enough women, they've been in an abusive relationship, right? And I don't know how, a, from a, I don't want to say just from a woman's perspective, but, you know, I always wonder how, how it gets to that point. I'm not talking about like, you know, triggering somebody and make them mad. I'm saying like for somebody because there might be younger people listening to this. Are there, it's like, are there warning signs? Like if somebody's getting into a relationship, like what's, what, is there something that you could look out for where you know, like, okay, this person might. Control. Like, control. Seclusion. Manipulation. Seclusion. Just secluding you from your friends and your family. Manipulation is a big one. Um, so you're saying if, if you're dating a guy. And they're very possessive of you. Um, they get jealous over lots of things. They start to control like what you do, who you talk to, where you go. 
Um, those are all tall tale signs that not necessarily it could lead to physical abuse, mm -hmm. but it can lead to mental or psychological abuse, which are all forms of domestic violence. Um, so what do you think happens? Does somebody get involved with somebody else and then they don't? Because like one of the things, this is what I will say, because the your other side, your opponent, I watched, um, I tried to do a little bit of research on today. And I guess, I don't know if he did it the day of the fight or the day before, but he did like a Facebook Live and I watched it. And honestly, everything he said was truthful. Now, when they talk about you, I don't, you know, that's still in question. I, I don't know about that stuff, but he said some things like um, one in four women. No more one in four. But, and then from that, I have to imagine that a lot of people don't report that. A lot of people don't report their abuse. Um, a lot of men don't report their abuse because it is kind of laughed upon by um, police, which I know personally because, like I said, I've done this for so long. So I do have people that reach out to me on social media or public um, personally, and they ask me for their outlets. Where can they go? Who can they see? This is what they're going through. Um, you know, the, are, are they are they in fear that this person will find out and it'll make things worse? Or what's the thing that stops? They don't know what to do because they are either a man. Um, or a woman, they're worried about, yeah, the outcome of what the other person is going to do to them or th the men that I have spoken to are fearful that it's not going to be taken seriously, which right. unfortunately, and this is just my opinion and my views is it's not always taken seriously. I've had it happen to me personally where I've had a huge gentleman come after me and I've tried to report it and they say as long as he doesn't assault you then it's not a big thing but then again I've had the same gentleman come after me again and me just tell them you know something specific and I've had six police officers come at me being a little 90 pound woman going against a 300 pound man and it's just it really depends on who you talk to like it's because part of this advocacy is is I, I want to empower anybody who feels like they're in an abusive always relationship seek to, to seek help. Totally. Always seek help. Always find somebody to talk to. Um, there's lots of shelters. There's lots of resources. Because um, even, um, Christine, I had, um, it was two weeks ago, I had um, the executive director of the CPCA in Poughkeepsie on the show. Um, the CPCA is the Center for Prevention of Child Abuse. So even in her statistics on what they hear... And you wouldn't believe like the sexual abuse that goes on, and 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 honestly, the the human sex trafficking that goes oh, on, crazy. even in this area, Joe. Because like I guess she was saying, the throughway in in eighty four combined, yeah, and it's like a major sex trafficking. You lot, wouldn't even yeah. think that it's going on around here, but I, I wasn't bringing it up because of that. She talked about like just in sexual abuse, it was something like one in ten people are sexually abused by the time they're, and I I don't want to say the exact number because I forget what she said, but it was like by the time they're nine, and That's then she crazy. said of that only one in 1,000 ever talk about it. It's fear of what's going to happen if you do say something. And I know that's a thing for them because they- That was my mother. She was always fearful because she was degraded to the point of being told she'd never amount to anything without them. You'd never be able to afford anything without me. You're no good. So a lot of people do it, um, don't report out of fear of, um, and they also don't get out due to fear of I'm never going to be- you know, good enough to do this. I'm never going to be happy. I'm never going to find somebody. Do they think they or, can change the guy? Like they actually love Sometimes them? they feel that they can change people sometimes. And, and I keep on saying guys, sorry. I, I'm not trying people. to be, yeah, sorry. it's people. I know. It's, um, it's, it's also fearful for children, especially if you're involved in a relationship where you have either mutual children or not mutual children, they'll use your kids as a way to hold on to you. Right. So if you leave, you know, I'm going to hurt you or your kids, which is actually what was said to my mother. Um, when my mother did leave was, um, I'm going to, you know, kill all four of the kids. I'm going to make you watch and then I'm going to kill you. And we actually had it wow. in writing. Wow. You know, so. A so lot if you have even some, if you have something like that, can you go to authorities and say, or you they can don't take it to authority? Um, what they choose to do with it. It's hit and miss. It's, it's, it's a hard thing because even after everything that happened to me and having all the letters and, you know, um, the, stuff to back, you know, my mom on, you know, this is a bad situation. This guy, you know, is only out to harm people because this wasn't the gentleman's first offense. It was his third, you know, shootout with the police. 
years later holding Jeez. my little sister at knife point when she was only two months old, which stood up, you know, ended up in a standoff with the police again, which I witnessed because um, me and my twin brother are the ones who called the police. So we had to witness that happening to my little sister and then me. So each um, assault became worse. So it's fearful of what's going to happen and where do we go with this and how do we do this and what is the system going to do for me? And everybody will question the system. I question the system myself, but at, there comes a point where you have to stand up for what you believe in in a whole and not just bits and pieces. I believe in you know, helping a victim as much as I believe in trying to help the accused also. Mm -hmm. if, if you don't help the whole picture, there's no hope for any situation the, I guess. the coolest part about today is that is that both of you are here like i love that I you guys so are, <laughs> it's it's so i mean i keep on like i'm getting lost sometimes because my mind is drifting so and i'm thinking about like well, there's two sides right in front i'm of like you. I mean, holy cool. cow uh, it, it's definitely a step in the right direction I, is what we felt you know what i was thinking uh, just to give myself some credit oh, real quick go. i can tell with your face <laughs> no who who else would even entertain so like one of my one of my um, virtual mentors is Joe Rogan. Like yeah. I listen to his podcast, and I never did I think I was going to have it. I, I I'm not an MMA fight. I don't know anything about fighting. Anybody out there? I'll tell you right now. If you don't like me, you can kick my ass. Like I'm not a tough person. <laughs> me either. I, I will get destroyed. I I know that I'm going to lose the fight. I'm just hoping that you won't get out of it totally <laughs> harmless. <laughs> um. No, I mean, so Joe Rogan, like what I love about him is that he talks about anything with anybody, but he also has FU money where like if he says something and it, and it comes back, on, it's like whatever, you yeah. know, not that it's not hard psychologically and mentally. Um, I felt like I was taking kind of a risk today because obviously people can I pin me. We all and, did. Yeah, all, all of us, yeah. of, of course. Um, but I don't like my thing is I don't want to wait till I have FU money. I want to have that mentality beforehand. I want to be able to talk about something like this because nobody else is. Well, and gotta, even if we do it on the smallest the level. Box, man. And you know what you did? You stepped out of the box. Because I thought about every day. You, I was you like. You had to take shit for this. And you wanted it anyway. Christine there, knew every she day was going to take shit for even reaching out to me. But you got to step out of your comfort zone, man, to get big things happening. Maybe you guys felt the same way. But I, what did I, I asked you a week ago, maybe. Yeah, yeah. A week ago, yeah. and every morning I woke up. I'm like, yeah, I should cancel this. <laughs> <laughs> no, every morning because it's. I'm just, you know, I you start to worry that, because it's because of my actions that you feel that way. And not I necessarily. Think so. I think you it's know, more I, so because of the subject and how it's not really no, spoken not, you know of. What? People need to talk about it. But that's the thing. People, people do need to talk so about it. People are so afraid to talk about it. But why? The minute you could start being open about it, the minute you could start, you know, getting to the root of the problem. And well, I guess some of my. And that, see, this is what I love about podcasts because we could just talk about this. Like I'm letting people into my brain as well. We all are. You know, I didn't want you to say something if you if you ever go through any legal process. I didn't want you to say something like as I was thinking. Like I put on a lawyer hat. And well, by the I'm way, I'm the one that's in the process. No, I know, but you that's don't think what I, I mean. want. The same thing. I don't want somebody to like look at, like watch or listen to this and and use this against you in any way and twist it. It's so, gonna like, be anyway. I was thinking about that. I was thinking I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I wanted to elevate the situation, but I didn't want to escalate it into like, like I was thinking is somebody, does somebody know where we do this? Are they going to show up? Sort of uh, all that. So I'm just saying like, sure. Thanks. Make me a little more nervous. No, no, no. <laughs> I, well, I, I think about the same thing, but you it's know, kind of like the wouldn't... monkey brain. I'm in like, you're kind of in like fight or flight in, in oh, God, constantly in your life. And you know, I knew that the, the thriving thought, cause I know, I know my true intentions, which is why probably halfway through the day i'm like to you're not canceling this show <laughs> you you need to do this like because if you, everything can help one person as long as you reach that one person this is not about reaching the mess i want matter. one person to watch this and go even if it's a guy even if it's a woman just being like oh shit i never thought about that exactly that's that's all i expect out that's of that's all i ever expect out of life for the past 16 years i i, I know i know you so i know that the, what this was about you, you've done missionary projects you, you you're a health coach you know, you make people laugh. You're a stand-up comedian. I know that you only want the good, and that's what you're about. You're my company's you, called Good, good for, for You Productions. productions. I mean, yeah, it's no pretty, joke. pretty plain and simple. What you were trying to get out of this, but I wore this hat specifically because I felt like we wanted some. I needed some spirit in here. I don't know if you guys believe in the spirits Angels? and stuff. And I felt like this is Aww. this was our our angel protector, yeah. whoever awesome. it is. Love it. Uh, just to make sure that we stay, because I think we could we could easily take this conversation and and make it negative. And I and I, no I give reason. you guys credit for first of all. I mean, that's how I started this whole little 
this uh, side banter is that I just give you guys credit for being here together. I think it's so awesome. I hear Joe sniffling. I don't know if he has a cold or if he's, he's always crying. got a case of the sniffles. He's crying. <laughs> here, bro. Why'd you fucking put the heat on? <laughs> but I think to 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 see like I've known Joe for a while. He's emotional. Like I know you're an emotional person. Uh, I, I'm emotional. That's not but, why I'm sniffling. But I've got no. Emotional. But I, I, I think it's you're aware that I think so. Awareness, like that's what you were touching on before. Like he, you're catching things that even how you react. Forget about the abuse stuff for a second. But even just your mental process on how you react to things, you're catching yourself before you let it go yeah. someplace. Yeah. Well, that's part. Yeah. Because your emotion could help you, especially someone like you. Your emotions could help you or hurt you, right? I, you know, I guess it it's true for anybody. Kind of but you're talking about, but yeah, yeah. I mean, if you, you know, I, I'm not like you said. I, I'm emotional. You think because I, of what I do and, and and the whole. Facade. Or you're passionate. I mean, I guess that's what I'm. You like when you do something, you do it all out. Yeah. Uh, he, was, mean, he was nuts on the football no, field. No, he can Christine. get emotional. I think I touched a soft spot with him last week when I met him, mm -hmm. and I shared my story, or at least my most recent um, sharing of my story. That I did in October, I think it, that hit hear. a little bit. Well, yeah, I was gonna say yeah. your your story is is tough. My story is very public, and it is very tough, very tough. So, how'd you get on Montel? How um, does that I, like I said, I don't um, I don't seek to get my story out there. Um, people reach out to my district attorney, who then reaches out to me, or people publicly reach out to me. I was found um, by Montel on two separate occasions through my district attorney. Just uh, the same thing, get my story out there, let people know that there is hope after. Um, I've done Facing Trauma, which is, or was a show where people have either experienced violence of some sort or they've been through a really bad situation, be it um, there was a woman whose um, brother was murdered by going to get a phone that he had lost. There was a young girl who was coming back from a concert and um, she was involved in a horrible car crash. The show was more about fixing some of our imperfections to kind of make us feel a little better and also to shed light on you know, bad situations. I made friends with a lovely woman who I actually taped the whole time with who um, boyfriend tried to kill her and her son. And um, it was publicly known, and he had slashed her face, knocked out her teeth. Um, she protected her son. He spent seven years in jail. And um, I watched her go through the battle of, oh, my God, when he gets out, you know, my order of protection, what the world. Right. And I've never seen her react. Because um, order like of protection probably react. doesn't make you feel safe, right? I have an safe, order of right? protection. It's not going to do nothing for me. It's a piece of paper. Right. You know, I, I, I know that. Um, but, you know, everything that I've done, be it Montel, be it facing trauma, um, I've spoke to a woman from, well, she lives in Florida, but she prints for the UK in a magazine called Reveal. So my story sh was shared there and that's across the world. Um, I usually hold walks on an every two year basis on the walkway over the Hudson. I put it together myself, local community member, raising funds, put together this huge walk to raise awareness for domestic violence. I like people to see that we can be an average person and still make a huge difference in this world. And this year was actually supposed to be my walk. And I, when I reached out to Joe, I was like, you know what? I'm not doing my walk this year. I have more purpose this year. My purpose this year is to try to help people who have been accused of a horrific act of violence or even just an act of violence in general to get into their heads, for them to share with me, for them to help me to help them and them to help me. Because if anything, my whole process has been about me growing and healing because of all the fears I live with and Joe is helping me. So not only mm. could I be helping him, he helps me better myself and not always judge the world, which is a big thing for me. So I'm thankful I for him accepting morning, before we even got here. I, said, I like the know, thing you sent to me this morning, um, but you go that? on, I'll tell you, oh, let him tell you. you can, she, um, yeah. I sent it to her this morning that, you know, I'm, I'm proud of her. I mean, there's a few fears that she's had to overcome to meet me. I mean, she's been to the fight. She's seen what I'm capable in the cage and she's heard, uh, you mm -hmm. know, other stories from other people and just to even reach out to want to speak to me based on what she's been involved in. I mean, I, I'm proud. I'm proud to even say that she was over, you know, able to overcome those fears. I mean, she's a strong woman. You can read it word for word. Well, no, actually the one, I love that one too, oh, yeah. but the one he sent me on my way here after he sent that to me, that message he sent me um, a spiritual awakenings. It stated sometimes 
life is about risking everything for a dream no one can see but you. Which really touched me and almost had me crying on the way here as I'm driving. And I'm like, I can't cry because then I <laughs> won't see. But, you know, the things he says shows his his progress and that he's not really a monster. People make mistakes. That's how they grow from no, them. The people, so, the people that know me, really know me, Jeff, Christine, and, and, you know, a lot of the other people that, that I'm friends with support me. They know I'm not a monster. They know I'm capable, what I'm capable of, but they know inside I'm not a monster. The people well, here's that, what's unfortunate about humans is that everybody, everybody is capable of the worst in them. They really, if you let it, if you let it foster, it will. So sorry. Joe's message to me this morning, as we checked in this morning to see what time we were going to meet each other, the message that he was just referring to specifically came across my phone as, I haven't told you this, but you're braver than you think reaching out to me after hearing stories and seeing what I am capable of in the cage, meeting me by yourself, but most of all, standing up for what you believe in. When you know others may not stand with you, I'm not sure many people have the balls enough, big enough to do what you do. And that meant a lot to me I mean, because I know that me reaching out to him was a huge risk publicly because of what I stand for. But I do know that what I believe in, I will never back down from anybody judging me. You might not agree with what I do or with me talking to him or becoming social with him. But you know what? I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to make a difference in the world. So. Yeah. Sometimes you, you wow. may not always make friends when you make a difference. You know, try to make a difference. You, like you said, you stand outside of your comfort zone. You know, that's what you have to do. You'll, you'll make enemies. So Mother Teresa, <clears throat> when, when Mother Teresa traveled the world. So I learned this on doing my mission trips. She, she always flew like in a jet, obviously, because she would like bring a lot of people and support and stuff. Wherever she went, they hated her because she caused chaos. So when they saw the plane landing and then they saw the boxes, it caused like riots and chaos and all that stuff. So even somebody, this uh, my point is, even somebody like her mm -hmm. was hated. I'm telling you. So like the, no matter what, that's why you can't listen to what people say. Um, and and really take that to heart when you know that you're doing something for the right reasons. You got to continue to do that and expect people to hate you for it. That's, well, that's okay. on the other side we of the spectrum. That's shoulders. on her side. My people are going to hate me for my actions, but sure, let them. But even trying to move forward, they're they going to hate you for it. My life at all, you know, you don't benefit me. So why should I even shed any type of emotion on it? I'm I'm, I'm better. I'm trying to better myself. I don't need. Uh, yeah, stay above it. Yeah. By well, the way, it's a good coffee. You like it? Yeah, it's really Cafe good. Cafe Bustello. <laughs> Shout out. I wish they are they a sponsor? I got need a Bustello sponsor with my uh silk diamond almond milk. Um first time I ever tried almond milk too. So I don't do dairy. It's pretty good. Uh dairy causes inflammation. So as especially as a fighter, we should talk about some things in your uh, nutrition. Just, just Can I be your nutritional that. coach for your next fight? <laughs> you should. Like I know you got That's trainers and have. stuff. Dude, you know I'll this, I'll do it for this, free. This last fight. It was the first fight I ever took where I didn't have to diet and I felt fucking great. I was drinking Pepsi the night before. Well, yeah, I would, I would talk um, to you about that. Yeah, because the guy had 35 <laughs> pounds on me and I'm like, damn, I could eat anything I want. I didn't even try to lose weight. Just in my normal routine at the gym, I was so great. I wrestled in high school. I wrestled in college. I think as wrestling, uh, I was like, so I've been trying to, I, there's so many Thanksgivings I wasn't able to eat. It, it, it was great to have to be in this competition. It's crazy. We're in like in wrestling in high school. They're wearing like rubber suits to cut weight. Yeah, you guys are the, nuts. Yeah, college gets worse. Rubber suits after practice, sitting in a sauna at the YMCM club down the street, spitting <laughs> in a cup all night just to shed a pound. It's crazy. <laughs> um, Christine, I wanted to add this. came up because we almost got into like the fight. We could talk about that night because I want to. Because I just like from a technical aspect, I have some questions because I know your wrestling background. So. I was even talking to your dad after the fight. What do you think? Because that'll that'll be a segue at some point. But I just want to. I think this is important for anybody hearing. What What do you think? I'm sure you're still always feeling like you're going through a healing process with your past, right? Of course. What do you think has helped you the most? Like I'm thinking of somebody else who's at the beginning. Like you know, you've been at this for 16 years. You know, somebody that's listening or watching is at year one, and or just in the beginning of it and they're looking for help or trying to figure out, I'm sure, cause you must've had some really dark thoughts. Like, I mean, I, I'm sorry to say this, but I'm sure I imagine it'd be like, why I don't even need to be on this earth. Like I imagine suicidal thoughts crept in. Never. Actually. Really? Um, wow. My first week out of the hospital is when I was contacted by Montel. Um, I, my <sighs> hardest that makes me uncomfortable. Part, 
My hardest that part. Mon- that Montel reached out to them while she was in the hospital. No, after mm. I got out. Oh, after. Okay, My okay. hardest part, um, I never wanted to die. And I still go through this part now is why did it have to be my exterior physical appearance? So that is one of my hardest things is people's looks and people's stares. Mm -hmm. Um, I never wanted to die. Actually, I attended my first burn conference within three months of coming out of the hospital, I want to say. And that was like a whole little community. So I never felt different. Now I feel different all the time. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I don't notice people's looks and stares because my abuse is not only interior minus exterior so minus physically you know they're put out there for everybody to judge and see um but i never wanted to die never so what do you think helped out the most i mean i'm sure you um, went through therapy children and my family my aunt pushed um when i came home from the hospital to make sure she brought me out in the public as much as possible and always hoped that i would not maliciously attack somebody for staring at me um I do know she told me that there was a few times that I did lash out at people that it's not nice to stare at me. What the hell are you looking at type stuff like that? But she said my turning point was um, when a child was staring and the child approached me and I got down on the ground and the mother got very skeptical. She's like, oh, my God, don't look, don't ask, because the child had asked me what happened to me, why I had boo-boos. And Children aunt, are so like innocent and no filter. and No just, filter, no nothing. And they don't mean anything negative nothing. by it. Yeah. And my aunt said she came up to me and she's going, oh. Please, dear God, don't let her attack this poor child. And my aunt said, I got down on the ground to their level, and I sat down Indian style. And I let the little girl climb on my lap, and I just told her that I was hurt. Hmm. And, you know, I just sat there and I talked to her. And my aunt said, that was my turning point. And that actually has been, like, one of my best parts is uh, the kids. I've worked in the school district with some of the kids before. They picked my cause as one of their fundraisers for the year. And just sharing with them. And it really depends on their their level that they're at their age. Sometimes it'll just be stay out of mommy and daddy's cupboards. Um, You know, some of the stuff in there can really hurt you really bad because what was used against me is a chemical. Um, As they get older, it's just, you know, to watch out for the abusive relationships. And I will tell them what I'm attacked with Um, and just always be on the side of caution. So I've never wanted to not be alive. I might want to erase, you know, my exterior scars. So I'm not always judged, Right. but I think I just, Everybody always tends to tell me I'm different and there's like this spiritual being behind me, which sounds crazy and all, but mm, not to me. I'm a little, you know, they, I have some crazy they always thoughts. say <laughs> what happened to me was for a reason. <laughs> My thoughts are different. And it too. was to impact the world and to change the world and the way they look at things and view things. So maybe that's what it was. I guess I don't really know. But just if they're being, if they've in that situation, just there's so many outlets. Just Google. Google is your best friend. And it will show you everything that's out there for you to use and who you can contact and what you can do. There's even some sites that if you go on to them and you're in an abusive relationship, if your abusive partner walks in while you're trying to get the help Mm, you need, the whole site will shut down and go to like these ads and stuff. How? You just click a certain button, like you're scrolling and stuff, and it'll go back to a regular yeah, thing. It's like so a trap door for you know, a website. I, yes, <laughs> and it's great of, because it, wow. it keeps them from their their abuser knowing that they're actually seeking help. Yeah, it's great. The, I, the I couldn't. Stuff that's I, out there. I, I've done a lot of googling too for different reasons, probably, but that I came across that site, and I seen that, and I said, it must be really bad out there for that to even be a thing that these women are sitting home and just because they're afraid of what their their abuser is going to do they click it to, to shut it off and i said god damn this is this is more of an epidemic than you think it is i saw that i couldn't believe it that, that that's even out a thing now it's it's unbelievable some people must go through and it, you know i men we don't think like even you were talking about being at the fight and being like nervous or like we're like it's so interesting to hear you say that from a male's point of view because I, like i said before i'm not a tough guy at all but I just also know, like, at, at least for me, because it hasn't happened yet, and I feel comfortable with who I am. Like, nobody's gonna try to start with me. Like, <laughs> I know that I'm not a fighter, but I'm also not just an easy person to take down. Like, but I don't. What I'm saying is, I don't. That thought doesn't even have to creep in my mind. Like, I heard somebody telling a story about they were in a hotel with their wife, and somebody knocked on the door, and the husband just went and opened the door and was like, "Oh my god, who are you?" Right. So you have. So he just went. So he came back to his wife, who's in the bed, and she goes, "Are you crazy? You have no idea who who that could have been." He's right? like, "Whatever." So we don't even think about the fear about being attacked. My um, 
I won't say her name, but my business partner, you know, we have like where you guys parked over here. There's a side parking lot. Now there's no homeless people or anybody bad out there in the woods, but she will not go by herself. Are you sure about that? You know, too. Well, this is what I mean. But this is what I mean. You this think is, that no, it's this safe. is my head. Me, on the safe. other hand, would be like. Um, but this is what I'm saying. There's like, lots of you. my thought are from a male thought process. Most of the time, we don't even think about the physical danger that we'd be Could in be by around. walking yeah, in the street at it's, night, it's, and and it comes up in your mind a lot. And I think it comes up more so in my mind just because of what I've been through, not so much just being a male or a female perspective, but I know what you're saying. A lot well, like of women that woman, are more fearful of stuff. That married couple that was in the hotel room, she had no past of any sort of abuse wow. at all. And she was like, are you crazy? That Because she knows if she was by herself, there's no way. He didn't even That's look true. at the people. He just oh, opened the door. Children, He's like, hey. I raised my children to, and I guess their school questions, my, my doing is insane with their doctors, but... I don't hide from my children the negative of the world. I share with them because I always want them to be prepared and ready for anything that might happen. So they know my story. They've done my TV shows. They've done my magazine stuff with me. They've aired on everything, a lot of things I do. But they know what the world's really capable of. They We don't hide it from them. Even with the epidemic of you know the drugs and everything that's going on now and um, you know the opiates and everything, but... Um, I don't lie to them. If we see something going on, we let them know, you know, these pills are being made to look like this candy. Mm. Social media is a huge thing right now. Um, we show them and it's more so my daughter than my son, because my son is like mentally headstrong and he knows everything that's going on in the world. Poor little thing. But, um, <laughs> My daughter, I'll show her like with the social media accounts that she's on, you know, some of these people are pedophiles that are trying to get addresses from children to traffic them. Um, you should see the video I posted last week. We got to be friends on Facebook because yes, we're not. we have to. Because that lady was talking about her, um, there was a, a little boy playing uh, uh, like some video. He wasn't on his Switch. He was playing a video game. And um, the dad came home and he's playing a video game. And, you know, you, you can play against somebody. So there's the video game and then the picture in picture. The dad walks in and the son's just playing a video game like nothing. But in the picture in picture was a dude and he was just sitting there on his couch naked. Get the, get no, here. it's Yeah, crazy. and he's playing against this this little boy. Oh my god. But that's probably how it starts. He forms a relationship with him and they then do. gets an address There's, or a number. Sick, so you really have to watch. Ones. There's ones that um will get kids to be friends with them and then once they're friends with them and stuff, they try talking them into uh, committing suicide and degrading them to no end. So I've had to make my children aware of this. The world is not a pretty place, but it's how you react to it that's the better thing. So we make them aware of the bad and the negative and we always teach them to be bigger and stronger. My son held his own walk. This year was supposed to be my daughter's. Hmm. When I explained to them, because I did explain to them about um, the fight before I went, and they were proud of me for going. They were fearful, but they were proud of me for going. And you came to the fight by yourself? I came to the fight by myself. Christine. I, I know. It was hard. <laughs> I did meet two gentlemen before the fight when I picked up my tickets who um, agreed to walk me to the fight because it was the road I had to walk down was a little sketchy, which made me a little more comfortable because they were bigger than me. So I knew like, okay, I'm good. But yeah, I went to the fight by myself. And let me tell you, I was scared. But like I said, I, I did let my children know about the fight and why I was going. I also let my children know um, after the fight about Joey and, you know, about what I was doing and because I always look for my children and my family's understanding of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I don't ever want to harm my family or um, make them be fearful. I mean, they are fearful, but my children completely backed me on what I was doing. Um, I told my daughter because this year was her walk because both my children will hold walks for domestic violence awareness. And I told my daughter what I was doing. And my daughter 100% was like, you know what? I get it, mom. People can change. I'm proud you're doing this. And I said, just some of the things she said, and I can't even remember exactly what it was, but it made me cry because she she understood what I was doing and she was hoping for nothing but the best in Joey. Mm. And she was like, we can do a walk another year, mom. Let's do it this way first and see what happens. And I was proud of her for 11 years old, understanding and being willing to just it, it, sit back on it was a big thing for cool me. That an 11 year old could actually, you know, put that into perspective because some people today, you know, adults can't even put that into perspective. <laughs> and and not another thing that we didn't get into is after that apology that I put up, it is crazy. It, the fight alone, I had a bunch of people there mm -hmm. that, that give me, you know, certain energy, but after the apology, the amount of support that I had from the people close to me, the people you look for support in your kids, 
the people that are close to you that give that support and words of encouragement, they don't understand just what those little words can do for somebody. I know. I know. It, is, it helps in the healing process that you put yourself out there and they may, they put themselves out there by supporting what you're doing, like you, mm -hmm. like you. Mm -hmm. It shows how much support you have that people want to see you get better. And that helps in the change. And, you know, the I mean, that's, again, never helps. That's, that's why you're here. Because, yeah. you know, you see, like, it's almost like it's ironic that the sun is hitting me at this time. Because I was just about to say, like, <laughs> it's almost like the light, that like a little crack for Joe just started to open up. Yep. And it could have very easily, you could have went and just closed that door and went to the dark place. But, like, you're you're allowing the light to come in. And it's not easy. No. This, this whole process can't be easy. Oh, man. I tell him all the time, just think before you react. Uh, think about what you're changing. And yeah, I think he was doing that even before. There's a lot I, of people out talking. there that care enough about me that are that are that took me under their wing and start mentoring me about their, certain things. And uh, again, like uh, I got a friend, uh, Darren, in, in Colorado. He helped me a lot for my fight. He came up. You know, he cared enough. And I explained to him the situation. And he goes, I'm always going to be your friend. He goes, I, I, I'm going to back you regardless of the decisions you make. I'll put something up on uh, on Facebook. He'll call me. You know what? Take that down. He goes, you got to start thinking like a professional athlete. And now I, I put that in my head. He goes, yeah. what you put out there, it, it you it's know, the could, way you're portrayed. Yeah. So he said, take it down. You know what? I didn't even question it. <laughs> Took it down. You know, there's people out there that are, that are willing to help me. You know, they don't, they can, they can see past all the darkness and it's good. It helps me also. Well, I can tell you that I'll always be your friend too. And part of it is not necessarily because I have it like just a desire to be your friend. It's, it's in my foundation as a human. Like I, I don't, I don't go to a specific church and I'm not part of a religion, but I have a strong Christian foundation. And I, and I, it has taught me that every person falls short of the glory of God. And I'm sorry to bring in like some Christian thought in here too. I hope you guys are okay with it, yeah, but fine. it's, it's important for my like mental state. Cause I strongly believe that I strongly believe that you can, you can hate the action and still love the person, you know? That's true. So I like, I'll always love you because I know that, when I like I so this is sorry this is weird that I'm going into this, but I I have this idea in my head that I'm gonna go up when after I die and there's gonna be some afterlife and somebody's gonna be like and talk to me about all my mistakes and how I fell short and I'm gonna have to answer for those. So also in my life I they might bring up when I was like pointing the finger at people and being like you, you know you weren't friends with this guy because of what look at you look what you but, did. You know, I'm not perfect, how, man. See that, that that part that part gets me because. Everybody out there has skeletons in their closet. They're Everybody. all guilty of something. And who are you to post judgment on somebody's actions? You don't know what I've been, been through. That's you right, don't know a right. fucking thing about me. But yet you're going to point fingers at me? You have your own shit. Worry about that. So what's good for you? So even though there was, you know, you you made shirts and then they tried to, I, I don't know what it sounds like. They tried to like just make it a gimmicky thing in some ways. Um, now we're here. So even if you have a push to elevate and somebody else was trying to bring you down, now we're here. Like it actually, without that all happening, we wouldn't be here talking about it. So we can also be thankful for the criticism and, and the point because it, it makes us realize that we- Publicity is still publicity. So you know, it got us to this point. But you know, like we were talking about before, like making your message your message. Like, you know, how many drug counselors do you know that had drug use in the past? Like it's it's so it's so important that for whatever it is, whatever it is, and listen, I talked about I lost 60 pounds. That's why I'm a health coach. I know what it's like to be fat and like not know how to lose weight. Like it sucks. You're just like me how to gain it. Yeah, just eat it. Eat something. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I can show you how to how to uh, like I joked about before spaghetti sandwiches. Mm -hmm. Have those at midnight from now on. Okay. Because <laughs> that's what I used to do, so and it's slowly get, you are. But so I know how to. <laughs> <laughs> so I know, like I know where those people have been. So when I talked, I just met with a guy the other week. He's six four, three hundred pounds. Maybe I don't know that extreme, but I know his psychology. I know what he's thinking. I know that he's making excuses and saying, oh, it's so hard. I can't do this. No, you're, you're kind of lying to yourself. But it's there for you to overcome. This, um, The idea of being on a carousel. One of, my, one of my core beliefs, I believe, that your spirit is on a journey. So when something comes into your life and it happens over and over and over again, it's not the world. It's you. There's something that you haven't addressed. So like... I think I used to struggle with having male relationships with other people. Like there was, there was something I, I'm sure if I went to a psychologist, there'd be something with my dad, but I never valued myself in front of other men. I was 
I felt very comfortable in front of women. And like I understood my value when it came to women, but with men, I was a little, I was always a little insecure. Why is that? So even in my business, I walked in here and I, and I, just, Oh, I'm just, so over it. <laughs> oh, okay, we no. have to tap into it because I'm like, yo, you're pretty fucking successful. I said I didn't see that side of you. I'm good, you but it's definitely growth. not feel that way. But like cool. over and over, uh, like it, I felt this insecurity around males, and and that like I sort of think about it myself, and it's like, why do I have that? I don't need to have it, and I and I worked on that, and I overcame it. But that was a pattern that kept on coming up in my life. It wasn't that other males were making me feel insecure. No, it I was allowing was... males to make me feel insecure. Yeah. Well, one of the one of the things in, in my past relationship, and, and, and again, it doesn't have to be guy versus girl. When I talk about that, there, there, the pictures are out there. There's uh, police reports out there that are going to make me look guilty, which I am. I, uh, I got tagged in one of those. I don't know uh, if you know that, but they tagged me. In, yeah, and, and they're it was going like, to, and that's okay. But they tagged me and Christine also. But it also doesn't tell the full story. No, no, but that's where I'm there's getting. There's his the, side, I her to just get, side, I don't and know then if you there's the truth. No, what you not, messed, not, not, not no. what you okay. But I just want to mention something real quick is that. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, you're right. I don't know how you're going to say I'm this. I'm going to say it, but the, the relationship that I was in when I talk about it, I don't. I mentioned the relationship as a whole was toxic. There was to toxic behaviors, and the reason I'm getting here is because of what you talked about uh, insecurities. You know, the one that I was in, insecurities were flaring on on both sides. We both knew each other's insecurities, and we both attacked them. Mm. And uh, y y you know. <sighs> There's, you know, I, I would lie if the, I'd say that I wasn't abused, whether it was physical. Uh, Christine said, you know, mental, we, medical. Ment mentally abused, but and I, and I wasn't physically abused in, in the relationship and I was mentally abused in the relationship, but verbally abused. We both were. We were. It was a whole toxic relationship. I'm taking the heat for it now. Um, I would never call the cops. I got, you know, I've got hit in the face and I've got slapped in front of my son and I, I've had these things happen. If I call the cops, I thought. What are they going to say? They're going to come to the house and say, aren't you an MMA fighter? Like, what do you want us to do? So I never call the cops. So I don't have those police reports. That does not mean that there was, that there wasn't a, you know, domestic uh, abused relationship on both, on both sides. It was absolutely, you know, and, and, and the person I'm speaking about can hide that stuff and that's fine. I, I, I'm growing from the whole process. So who's really, who's really benefiting? Yep. We never you know? look at the past. We always look at the future and where we're going. That's it. So where are we going? Are you guys having fun or what? We're yeah, I fun. love this, man. This is a cool experience. I, I've been on, on radio shows. I've, I've had a documentary done, but this is the first time I did a podcast. It's pretty cool. I, <laughs> I just like that you can just you can just talk. And, you know, it's, it kind of started because I, I always have conver I have a lot of conversations like this, maybe not about this topic, but I just talk to people and you get like to some inner thoughts. You grow from it. And the thing that always killed me was that I, I never recorded them. Aww. And I have all this equipment here. And I'm like, why am I not? Because people would come to me. They're like, hey, I'm thinking about doing a podcast. Do you know how to do it? Can I use your space? And, and I'm like, why, don't, why aren't I doing yeah. it? That's, that's kind of how it started. Um, and I'll, I'll get better as I do it. Because right now, I think I... I, you know, let, me, I let me ask you something off the subject. Because yeah. I'm curious about it myself. And I didn't even get a chance to speak to you about it. But like, where, where this, is, this is being viewed by your... This how is you, live. How on, do you monitor your viewers? By this the way? is um. Well, I've been watching up there. So this is we've been live for an hour and fifteen minutes. So you think people, do you? Do so you, at one point it showed me we had at the max, uh, we had twenty four people watching. All right. On on the YouTube. Yeah. Um. So it shows you who's in and out. Oh, I actually I think right now it says fifteen people are watching. Man, our viewers are dropping. How yeah, because you know you want to know why? Because we got past the heavy stuff. Like some of that stuff, there was anticipation about what might be said. So there was. I think at the peak there might have been 30 people watching so i think they wanted to see what was happening in the beginning um so yeah i mean so i have some subscribers i have like 120 subscribers on my youtube channel but i just started like promoting that yeah, i had that a YouTube only tells channel. youtube man you, you you tapped into uh the podcast the actual recording will be put on later that i don't stream live all right because i don't know how to do it yet i'm trying to i'm doing this i'm like learning as i do it like yeah. i don't know this is like a, a, a cheesy webcam this is terrible i'm gonna improve this like you no, know this is awesome. it's just a start just like everything else i've done i don't know how to do it i don't know how to have this conversation about a heavy topic but i know how to be a person so it's like okay so let's just do that and let's see what happens you yeah, know i didn't yeah. know how to start a production company I just yeah, like graduated turn, from college. This is crazy what you turned it into. It's pretty cool. And I got that. It's just like I didn't know how to do stand up. I started doing stand up two years ago and I wasn't funny for like a year and a half. And then you've been funny your whole life. <laughs> yeah, but not like on stage, man. That, it's it's so easy honestly, to be funny in you conversation. Talk about what I do. 
that's tough, man, because you don't know what kind of feedback you're going to get from people. You could be dying up there, and where are you going to run to? So I had, I did, um, I did a stand-up show uh, a year and a half ago at Tilly's Farm. Is that what yeah, it's called yeah, in Tilly's Brewster? Tilly's Farm and Table, right? So I, ha I don't do this joke anymore because I've, I've gotten better stuff. So I kind of retired this joke, but um, so I can talk about it because I don't talk about any jokes. Because if you hear my jokes, then you won't go see my show. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm watching TV one night and there was a, a, a commercial on for it was called um, I haven't talked about this in a while. It was called um, non 24. So it's a prescription drug uh, for blind people to allow them to fall asleep because they don't see the sunrise or set. So they have a hard time going to sleep. So my take was I'm watching a TV commercial that's for blind people. So I'm just like, how you know, I, I, I think that the, the production company wasted money on the budget. They just needed the audio. They just needed a voiceover. <laughs> right. So I say this, so it gets a chuckle like that. So after the Tilly's uh, table um, the show, this woman comes up to me. She's like 30 feet away. And I'm like, we finish the thing. We take a picture on with everybody. And this woman just like points at me from like 30 feet away like this. And I'm like, I'm going like this. And she's like this. So I walk over to her and she goes, I just want to let you know that I'm blind. And I didn't appreciate that joke. And I was like, Wait a minute. I was like, you're blind? How did you see me? First of all, like, how did you call me over here? And then she's like, and I'm like, listen, I'll tell you what. I was like, that that joke was not meant to be offensive towards blind people. I was like, I was actually making fun of the production company. Right. I go, but I'm sorry. I, I won't do the joke anymore. You're right. It's offensive. She goes, no, no, no. You can still do the joke. And I'm like, what are you saying to me then? She's like, I just want to let you know that it's offensive. She goes, you know what? I bet you've never seen this before. She takes her finger and presses it on on like her eyeball. Like she goes like this and yeah. presses it on her eyeball and pushes her eyeball into the back of her skull. And I was like, I looked at her. I'm like, I gotta what go. The hell? <laughs> so what I'm saying is like you never know. Like so, stand up because How you're you right. Laugh at that, by the way. I would. Well, you were in shock. I, w I was like, when you get off stage, just like you finish with a fight, you're yeah, like, you're, you're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. You're, you're like, all oh, the adrenaline's rushing. You're starting to come down, but like you're still at your peak. I was on you didn't fire process that. because I have a, right now I'm up to like 10 or 12 minutes in my, my routine. The moment before, when they say my name and now Jeffrey Cabelli, Joe, I swear to God, all of whatever I think I'm going to say, my yeah. act, uh, it just disappears. Yeah. It's like we used to play football. He'd be like, wing right, 82 down pass on three, go. I get up to, I put my hand, that was a real play, by the way. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'd put my hands under the center and I'd be like, Holy shit, I just forgot the play. <laughs> you know, they used to happen so much. I and I'd just be like, all right, hike. And as soon as I said hike, I would remember the play or what I had to do. So I actually, it's good to have that, um, to recall on that. Because now when that happens, when I go up on stage, I usually grab the mic and I go on there. And that first second, I'm like, oh my God. I, I, but then you just have to start. And then once you start, everything else comes together. And my thing is kind of like a story. So it has transitions. So I just got to remember the first line. And then everything else Start will happen. Flowing, right? So it's so interesting that I'm saying this because I think like no matter what you do, I, it's I think it's that's why I try to tell kids all the time now because I, you know I teach film and I do like these um, public speaking things. Like I was just at Rye Middle School doing a, a talk on mind, body, soul. They were like, "Yeah, we want to hire you an hour and a half talk to uh, 13 year olds about mind, body, soul." I'm like, okay, so I do that, but I I I try to talk to them about like everything that you want to do in life when you first start. First of all, you're not going to be good at it. And second of all, you're not going to be ready for it, but you need to start doing it anyway. So that those little things in my life, like I, I don't forget, like when we used to break from huddle and I didn't remember the play because that allowed me to to have a reference. So when I go on stage and I forget it, be like, you know what? This is fine. This has happened before. You know that you're going to figure this out as you go. So just just start going with it. And I, and I think that's it's an important lesson for me that I have. But it's again, it's like something you know, kind of negative from, from a fighter's perspective. Everybody knows uh, the famous Mike Tyson quote is that everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. You know, mm -hmm. I have a plan going into it. The minute the <laughs> bell rings, I'm like, fuck, what was I supposed to do again? You know, so it, I was thinking true. so about your fight. Let's talk about just the like the the logistic, the technicality of the fight, because uh, I go there and I did, had no idea you're going to be the last fight. It was like a long time. Me and uh, I went there with a friend, George. I won't say his last name because he, he might be watching. I he said there. he said he was going to watch. He said he was going to watch. So I know he's like in his pajamas right now having a <laughs> cup of coffee. Bustello. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got there. We wanted, I mean, I bought ringside seats. Yeah. I didn't know you were not going to be in the boxing ring. I didn't know that you were going to be yeah, in the octagon. Like, cool. I didn't know what was going on. But we got there at 6 o'clock when the doors opened. Me too. I don't think your fight started until 1030. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
So <laughs> me and George were sitting there for four and a half hours. Like, I don't think we got, I think I used the bathroom once. We didn't eat anything, but we're just that sitting there. That was crazy. And we're watching this and we watched a couple of people. Honestly, there's a there was one fight and I think it was a championship fight. The dude should not have been fight. I don't know if you get to see the other fights. Uh, you know, there I was a kickbox. Dude, let me tell you this real quick before we get into your fight. There was one fight, honestly, I gotta say it was it was in a, it was an inappropriate fight, and here's why. There was a championship, I don't know if it was middleweight or lightweight or something like that. It was a kickboxing fight. <laughs> and this is when you knew it was gonna go bad. First they say, and the champion, da 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 da. Oh, and I the forget guy his name. To come? No, no, it wasn't oh, okay. that guy. Oh, it might have been that guy. But so he's standing here, and then the contender comes up and they go, and his first fight ever, this guy, da 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 da. So they put on the headgear on, 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 anyway? on the so listen to this, man. So they put the headgear on the contender, you know, and he's sitting there, he's getting all warmed up doing his thing. And then they go to put the headgear on the champ. And he goes, No, I don't need that. <laughs> I look at George and I go, Oh, this is gonna be bad. Yeah, I didn't bro, really have that option. I, I wouldn't wear the headgear either. Bro, I hate, I hate the it. contender, he kind of like I, I'm trying not to say names because I'm not I don't want to make anybody look bad. I just think it was inappropriate on whoever like organized the fight. He like kind of doing this and the guy like ducked a punch and he just kind of like looked at, you could tell like he, the, the champ was in like slow motion. He might as well been because he was, you could tell he was like, oh, man, I'm going to knock this guy out. Yeah. And um, he did like one like reverse fake kick. I don't know what you call stuff. Like he was going to do like a roundhouse reverse roundhouse. Yeah. And he just faked it and the kid didn't really move. And then he did it for real. He dropped and, him. and the shin caught him right on the side of the head, right on the side of his temple, and hurt. he just went down like that. I mean, he just wow. like his body stiffened up, and one yeah, kick. He I went heard down. the crowd's reaction. I didn't get to see dude, it. Dude, that live. wasn't cool because honestly, if that kid wasn't, let's say if for some reason that kid wasn't wearing headgear, dude, that would have been bad. Like yeah. I'm, I'm about like sporting fighting and all that, but also you have to protect like people's like it health, like their well being. Uh, that was the extreme mismatch, dude. Uh -huh. The kid's legs were the size the of tree didn't trunks. Really think that one out. And you know what? Dropped. As the other fighter, that fight lasted seven I don't know, I don't seconds. Know how comfortable I would have been with you know getting in the ring with somebody who's wearing a headgear. Like, I, I, if you're the champ, you don't want that fight. You know it's going to be going to be bad right from there. He clocked him. But so anyway, so we watched some of those, and then and then your fight started. So I was thinking, I wonder what your game plan was because I know you have a wrestling background, but I guess you have to be prepared for anything. Like, how do you prepare? Meant, like, I know you were talking about game plan. What was your I, game I, plan for that fight? Try, you know, when I prepare, most of the time. I try not to watch videos of the fighter because if, if I watch the video, I'm going to try to gear my preparation towards what they do instead of focusing on what I do best. Yeah. So I try not to fucking watch it, but it, it, it's there. The temptation is there. So I watch it. And uh, I got, like I said, those mentors around me. Trying so what was his? Um, uh, I watch a lot the, of his fights. The Dominator, right? So what is he? Um, is he just, he's a stand up fighter? He's not I really a grappler. I watch a lot of his fights. And there, a lot of it is stand up. He's uh, you know, a bigger guy, so he kind of relies on his, the weight of his hands. Uh, he, most and of he his knocks. Fight, he does he normally knock people out? I, mean, and, I never, I never haven't seen. Uh, yeah, I didn't know how much. But I know did that a lot of people were telling me, you know, due to his stature, that he, he you know, oh man, he's, you know, he, the guy can go three rounds. I, I've seen him go three rounds with a bunch of people, so his stamina is certainly there. But he's always, he's always, always standing, standing up, up. Yeah, and he's always trying to throw haymakers, and hopefully he connects, and some people connect, and that's whoever's been pairing him up has been putting him with guys similar to his fighting techniques, standing up. He never actually – doesn't look like he fought any wrestlers. And if he has, he didn't prepare well for it. Um, so I, I went with my strength. And I'm know. thinking like so – I don't know if you actually watched the fight, Christine. But I did watch the fight. I, I'm watching it, and I'm like – I'm thinking because I know Joe's background as a wrestler. I'm just thinking like if this fight ever – I'm thinking like Joe definitely wants to get to the ground as soon as possible. And if that happens, I, I kind of think I know the outcome because – um the guy uh is is bigger and i think just in just because of his weight if he gets on the ground i i just looked at him and i'm like i've seen people that size and if they get on the ground they have a hard time just maneuvering well there, there's it's two not sides easy story. do i want to i didn't want to stand up because gonna basically in that in this sport anybody can connect with another person and, and drop him but i don't want right. to risk the, the fact of him actually tapping my chin and me going down so but you came out it looked like you came out throwing punches like right away yeah i mean i was prepared man wow uh, you would think like I don't know like sometimes you watch fights and they kind of like size each him, other you know, up. The biggest thing is you I don't came out and have him fall on top of me. Now I got to worry about getting him off of me. Right. So I wanted to make sure that I got into the dominant position. You know, him on top of me could have been a whole different ball game. You know that that right. that could have changed the perspective of the whole fight. 
So, so did you when you trained? Were you like because he you said he was twenty pounds heavier, or he's thirty five pounds heavier? So did you when you trained? Were you fighting guys that were like forty pounds heavier? Yeah, or uh, no, you can't. Not find really. That. I mean, I tried. I I rolled around with somebody, but not that big. You know, because I but like what you said, like if I get on the bottom, I can I get out of this? I'd want to know just in a practice, like a simulation, like what what would I have to really do? Because I don't, I don't, I just don't. I mean, I'm really ignorant to fighting. I don't know anything about it. But like you're right. Like if he's on top of you. Well, you're gonna have to do some quick thinking because he can unload, you know, on you pretty. The fight could have went in a different direction if that happened. I had to make sure that I put myself in the best uh, possible position, which was what everybody saw me on top. It didn't look like he was throwing a lot of punches back. Is it like? Do you think? Do you remember the fight? It was so fast. No, you know, did what it I last think? two minutes? I gotta tell you something. It, it went two minutes and forty-five seconds. It was close. He almost so got out of the first round. I was gonna say the rounds are three minutes. Yeah. Uh, he, he was doing a lot of – here's the thing. For the first time, you know, I, I always baited into the fight game, and I know a lot of it is is showmanship and talking, you know, before the fight. Sure. He had a lot to say, and I didn't say anything. Part of my – part of the method was, you know, staying positive and letting them do the negative talk, and it worked in that – But that's worked. fun. That's fun. I it like fun, but as long as it, it doesn't get carried but, but away. But i tell you what. It put a lot of weight on his shoulders. It put a lot of pressure on him. And then when he showed up and he seen that it was in my – you know, I had all those support. I looked at him across from the cage, and I said, man, this – this dude's not even moving. He's cemented to the floor. He put a lot of pressure on himself. I was fluid because I didn't say one word mm. before the fight. I was ready. I didn't have any pressure on me to do well. He did. He had a ton of people. And I think that was part of his downfall. You got to yeah. be able to back it, man. Yeah, no. And actually, so that 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 video that I said that I watched when he was talking about just, you know, a, a domestic abuse. And like I said, I give him credit because most of the things that he was saying in there just on a general sense were true. Like I actually like, even if it wasn't the way that you would have done it, I think even though it, not everybody did things in the right way, it is creating some awareness towards domestic. So I think the larger goal is still being achieved anyway. But, uh, hold, but hold on, no, I'm not. I'm not trying to defend him or you. No, I'm just, I just want to give him some credit because I'm a fair person. Like I I'm neutral. You, I, you know, even even with the shit talking that he was doing towards me, and I told Christine this. I have no ill feelings for him, and he I actually still seems like a nice guy. He, honestly, his heart was in the good, in the right place. Right. Okay, right. His heart was in the right it. place, and I'm all for what he was doing. It looked like he it, cared. The, the only like issue he that I have is that he 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 heard the story one sidedly, and he took it. So that's what it's I'm saying. It's easy for somebody to take the information he was given on that side. He never bothered to reach out to me, like. You know, what so that, that's what I'm saying to you. Like I, I'm, I was worried about doing this because am I only, am I only, I'm, and not that I'm taking your side. I hope that does not come across that way, but I'm just checking myself. Am I only telling one side? And I just, I mean, that was part of my fear going into this. Like I didn't want to do the same mistakes that everybody else. I didn't want to keep escalating this thing, um, which I don't think I'm doing. But what I wanted to say was um, the one thing that he said in the video and um, sorry, uh, he said, "I'm a show up fighter." So he says, "I I get off the couch and I just fight." No, but he said he did, he didn't do that for this fight. He said, "Oh, he, he said he oh he did." Yeah, say I think that. a lot of okay. people misunderstood that. Yeah, I did because I thought he meant he just showed up for this. No, fight. No, 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 he's no, saying he he's trains. been doing fighting for so long, and a lot of his fights he just rolls off the couch for. Yeah, but he wanted to tell his pe people that he actually trained for. That this he fight. trained. For, okay, gotcha. Is one of the things he said like it like it meant something to him. Right. Now, I, I looking back in hindsight, if I were him, I probably wish I didn't say that. Given right. The outcome of the fight. Yeah. Yeah. So is it, but is there going to be a rematch or what? You know, he, 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 there's, again, I didn't get involved with it, but I've read. Because you have to make sure that, because I think the next one, knowing like everything that's going on now, and that now that I'm more aware, I think there actually is more of a chance for something to happen pre fight. Not on, on my it, end. Okay. There that, that would be like my biggest concern. Like I would want to tell too. the gym, like, yeah, you, listen. He, he, he wants, he said that there could be a rematch. I read that somewhere, but he doesn't want to do it in my backyard, so to speak. And he doesn't want to do it for the same promotion. Why? Where's he from? He's from, uh, I believe, Upton, two hours up north in Mount Upton. Oh, Farm okay. Boy. Okay. Yeah. I you figured know. everybody was local. I mean, I just don't know about this stuff. <clears throat> no, none of us, not all of us were local that came down. Oh, yeah. I want a rematch. Same place. That was, that's a nice little spot. Uh, yeah, for, they need to me, move that octagon into the middle, though. Yeah. I don't like it in that, I, tucked I in that corner. Like, you know what? I, I Every venue that I've ever fought in has been different, and I and I kind of want to, I don't want it to get stale for me. The 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 whole excitement about it. Right. So I want to fight somewhere else. So I'm okay with I'm open with traveling. I love fighting in new arenas. You know, I, sometimes I still pass them uh, with my son driving. I go, you know, Daddy fought there. You know, I don't. Think, it means cool. more to me maybe to him, but <laughs> <laughs> I probably tell him like 20 times if I go by. He's like, I know, Dad. I know. You always tell me that. <laughs> so. 
the the during the fight so you guys because we didn't really we didn't finish the fight i want to actually finish it so like you guys are i don't know kind of like throwing jabs at each other and then i guess you lock arms at one point and then that's when you realize you can take him down right well that's my skill once you got close don't to him you're close to me yeah don't yeah. let me put my hands on you and you know i part of the I'm, I'm a little disappointed in the way he was trained i mean you got to know something about me at least watch my videos and do some research because if i was him and i'm tr preparing to fight a wrestler i'm gonna work on takedown defenses right when was the last time you fought before that fight oh it's been years that's what i'm saying i wonder if like I, you just know what the guy that. the promoter that has been hounding me for years to try to get back in there get back in there and i've been putting them off putting them off and uh you know what i just looked at this as an opportunity like i could get my head right i'm thinking clearly let me get back in the gym let me do what i love and i, I was so happy to do it until the negative you know stuff started and i'm like damn what did i get myself into you know mm -hmm. so it, it it was it was strenuous my 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 girlfriend was you know behind the scenes involved with it a lot and she uh she's like a lot of times she's like i wish you didn't take this fight i wish you didn't take this fight you brought this upon yourself you brought, you know what and maybe i did you know it's easy it's easy to say that kind of stuff when when that shit is around you know you can't always be on top you're gonna have haters everywhere i think you love to fight like in the i'm talking about in the ring like I think, I think that's uh, I think that's really great. So that okay, so now you get close to him, you take him down. Now I didn't know this. You said in one of your posts that if there was six unanswered punches, they would call the fight. Somebody told me that before the fight. Because is I'm, that I'm normal honest. in a fight? Like yeah, well, I think the ref, I think the ref wants to. Like how does UFC does it? The, yeah, it's, it's just a judgment call, right? It's, it's not. It's a judgment call. I mean, they're, they're it, because of the the flurries and stuff. There can't be a set number. But if right. the fighter is defenseless and he's not protecting himself. The, it's the ref's job to protect the fighter because was that so do you think that was really because i feel like he got up and he was like wait a minute why i don't why? think he realized what happened to him i think he caught a couple good shots and he was discombobulated um anybody that watched the fight saw that the ref gave him ample enough opportunity for him to try i gotta to say he didn't look like not only was he not defending himself it didn't look like he didn't uh, he wasn't in a position to punch back so you, it's hard to punch back from the, dude, from the floor you have nothing it's just arm you can't put there's leg no, there's or no hip. power behind it. You're, you're, you you know, can't put anything into that. The ref gave him enough time to, to try to fight out of it, more than enough than he should have, maybe because it was a title fight. Yeah, I was afraid that they were going to make the the stoppage controversial, but I I I, it was, I think it was a pretty good judgment. When you call. say today, you meant his side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did. Yeah. I mean, but I don't. And, and then at the, that point, you just got to be humbled and take a step back and say, you, you know what, I got beat. There was excuses being made. Yeah, but a lot of excuses. I, that's Illegal so elbows. Normal. I mean, I watched the video hundreds of times. I didn't see one elbow being thrown. It's it's so normal to have you know whatever reasons to say because you have you have to have you have to have an ego going into that fight. You almost have to. Yeah, like you can have an ego going into it and feel and try to make yourself. Confident. But I'm saying you're still. But you got to be humbled afterwards, bro. Take the loss. Give the. Yeah. I guess I'm a different opponent because it's hard for him to give me credit. You know, I he you know, was from every perspective. well, like you said, he put himself in a in a in a situation where, again, this comes back. To, it's almost like full circle, where there was no path in his eyes for you to redeem yourself. They, so he could not after the fight. There couldn't have been this kumbaya like good fight because then he would have been supporting. Well, I don't know why. Why do people against but think he, that he did fight for a good cause? We'll give him that much. I no, mean, I do. What he stood up for is great to say no more one in four it's my it's under my impression no i think that so i wouldn't have i wouldn't have heard that without his video that's no. what i mean i want to give the guy credit where credit is due we have we definitely because have. generally speaking I he seems so like a nice guy that was trying to do the right thing you know his background and what he had seen um personally he was standing up for a good cause and he had purpose behind what he was doing um maybe he was swung into this fight or brought into this fight i use the term um, roped in roped in yeah um and he he didn't get a full understanding but he still did fight with purpose and i i personally would still love to see him fight again yeah. because i think I, he's a good fighter i, I can't say that enough i mean uh, his heart have. was in the right place for uh, sure but he he got a lot there was ulterior motives behind it so to speak by the people that put him up to this and there what they led him put to believe this fight was about wasn't really what it was about. Mm -hmm. And he kind of didn't, you know, it was his opportunity Listen, for, I, people I, to, for him to be a hero. And he took it. And I, and I, and I, praise I would, if, if what you're saying is true, and again, I have to put that on there just because, you know, if, if what you're saying is true, I would have fallen as him in his shoes. I probably would have fallen for it too. 
if i saw the pictures and then you hear the stories i would have been like oh yeah f this guy the dragon who does this dragon it's time to slay some i would i would be saying the same thing you know here's the thing and i wait did we talk about that already I, th I think you touched on it. I, I the same thing I think going off, out to watch the dragon. Off, but it wasn't on the it wasn't on so camera. That was so interesting because that's why when it, when Joe said you were gonna be on it, I'm looking at these posts and you had like a selfie. You were like, we're gonna watch the dragon yeah, get his ass removed, kicked or something um, like that. That that and I I saw it too I because I after yeah, we became him. friends, I you know saw her past posts about me, and and part of the thing is that sh she was able to to talk to me and look past. Just the one-sidedness. A lot of the people are still looking at the one-sidedness of it and not interested in getting to know both sides and and, and, and not looking for what you're looking growth in, growth in the whole. This is all yeah, about what's growth. the point? What do you what do you want? I mean, that's what I ask. So in, in no matter what you do, if somebody wants to make me, if somebody comes to my production company, they're like, I want to make a video. One of my first questions is, I don't, I'm not trying to sell them, is what is this for? Where are you gonna put it? What's the purpose? What what is the end game? Same thing when I do health coaching. Um, same thing. No matter what somebody wants to talk about, for, for what? What's the point of this? Like uh, my girlfriend's redoing her website. She's like, we need to make this and that. I go, for what? Like what? What is the what is the point? Like you have to think about that as well. So for um, these people, because I, I'm I'm kind of I'm not sure. I think that you feel that you guys know what their motives are. I'm not really sure. I mean, and truthfully, what what the point is? Because if if we're gonna bash you in mm. certain ways and call you names, because that's you know that's what's going on currently. Yeah, I just it, to me, like you know, I'm not placing judgment, but that stuff is is just I don't see that as helpful. Um, so yes, I want to stay in this place where just growth, it's man. Well, it's I just think, growth. I think all Growing, three of us are looking for the same thing. And uh, you know, we're not gonna change everybody's perspective or mindset towards me or or, or the whole. Shit, you know process but no because it's not cool for, like for men it's not it's not cool man because well, i well I, will you make one mistake in life and you you have to live with it your whole life or do you sincerely care and, and want to see that person not attack somebody and mm -hmm. you want to see them grow that's what you really want do you you don't you're upset because this happened mm -hmm. right you're upset so what are you doing to prevent it you want to see that person not do this again it's right. easy to fucking right. kick somebody down when they're when they're down and call them a piece of shit and but what are you doing to help the matter? If you're going to do one, do the other. You know, and I, and I think a lot of people haven't figured that out yet. Hopefully, this brings some awareness to that aspect of it. He's I think we buddy. did it. I wonder if we're done. How do you guys feel? What else do we want to talk about? Because we might be done. I mean, okay. we hit. I hit. We hit on everything we want to hit. I one thing I just want to say is that I, I told the guy at the uh, t-shirt shop that I was going to give him a plug. Oh yeah, what's, yeah. It's, who's it's he? Sparkles Corp in uh, in Maypack on Route Six. Sparkles. They're still around. Were they around still in high around. school? Yes, different owner. Good guy. Oh, okay. I deal with them. Do they do like window tints on cars and stuff too? Is that Negative. the same place? No, that, I'm thinking of something else. Okay. Hmm, do they? Thinking of no, not this place. What? What? It's, where are they? It's on Route Six. Uh, shit, I don't know the address, but it's by um. <laughs> Like, nice plug, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Sparkles. Sparkles no. Corp. Look it up. Google it. You know, but anyway, Google's they, your they, best friend. I thought I thought they tinted my windows a long time no. ago. No, I wonder who you're thinking of, though. Anyway, and I also want to give a plug to UFC Gym because I know they stuck by me and they uh, they took a lot of the heat. Uh, it, you know, it wasn't it wasn't uh, it, basically they were just trying to help me. They're mm -hmm. just trying to support me. You know, and they knew nothing about it, and they took a lot of heat for it, and, and, and caught a lot of. Uh, bullshit, and I just want to just put that out there that the gym, since I've been involved with them, great people. The people that attend there and go there seem to love it. I, you know, I'm 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 training and I'm looking at uh, you know women's classes going on, and they all love me. They say hello and they, and they look like they're having a great time. And and uh, I just you know that's a, that's a, also a good place, and I want to plug them also. Um, and I, I just want to thank everybody out there who has shown support because uh, coming to my fight like you, like you, you didn't even tell me you were coming. I showed up, you know, I, I, when I showed up, I, I seen all these people that didn't even express their want. Were no, I was trying to come, to I, was, I grew up my beard. I was wearing this Oakland A's hat and I was in there and I was just like the good aura hat. Yeah. yeah no, it, I, those people, the support that helps me grow and it helps me, you know, see that even there is one side of people that may not, you know, agree with me totally. I do have the support of a lot of people. It makes me want to change for those people. So, so, I mean, that's really it. That's all I have. Joe for change. I like I'm, I'm happy you know, to have change. met uh, Christine through all this because, it, you know, I've been, especially somebody from her position, it's easy to throw, you know, garbage on, 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 all over me. And, and she 
thought outside of the box and said, you know what, maybe, maybe there is another perspective to this whole thing. Maybe somebody who has been an abuser needs help also uh, mentally. And, 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 and if I get to the root of the problem, maybe I could yes. in turn help uh, people that have abused and stop the vicious cycle. And there's going to be know? nobody better than you. Like that's what I was talking about with like the drug counselors to talk about that. Like as a, as a health coach, like there's nobody better than that person who's gone through it themselves to talk to the next person. Like I go to a Bible study and uh, all those guys in there, most of them are formerly incarcerated. Well, like that's you, what I mean. Imagine we said to them, you can't come from in. somebody who's never been through it. That's what I'm you saying. Know, you gotta yeah. be through. You gotta know what, you know, I, I see what you're saying. So get, get some shirts. You want to wrap it up? Yeah, I mean, I'm good. Is there anything yeah. you want to say, Christine? No, nope, I'm good. So buy some shirts. Well, buy actually, some shirts raise awareness. How should people get help? What who do they, What is the website? You did you say the name of the website? I don't have a website. Just I'm Google. Just, just Google. Google everything. Anything and everything you want to know. Just Google. I do make the world purple though. But all mm -hmm. your local shelters and stuff. If you just Google domestic violence awareness, there's numbers. There's outlets. There's everything. So Google that. Buy some shirts. Google that. Buy and, uh, shirts. And thank you also for Raise having awareness. us on, man. This Hell yeah, awesome man. Yes, thank yeah, you. Appreciate it. Cool. Thank you for keeping me quiet cool. as long as you could. I as just long didn't as want possible. Kickback, but yeah, I didn't. Kickback I wasn't, is fine. I'm, I wasn't sure why. I, I didn't got broad know. shoulders. I'll be all right. I'm glad you made it. Thank you, guys. Right, thanks. Guys. Thanks. We're done. You got it. Oh, so good. So that was.